Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hello, this is Robert Smigel coming to you today with Canada's podcast, where we talk to the entrepreneurs who are making it happen here in British Columbia. Selena Ho is the founder and CEO of Recloseted, a one-stop shop for sustainable fashion brands, Recloseted launches and scales slow fashion brands and helps existing brands become more eco-friendly through their consulting services and online programs. The company is based in Vancouver and serves clients worldwide. Well, Selena, welcome to Canada's podcast and thanks for taking the time today to be here for all our listeners. Yes, of course. Thanks for having me, Robert. I should have you do all my intros. That was great. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Okay, let's tell us a little bit more about yourself and give us the details on your current business, which sounds real interesting since we last talked. I, I had a little bit of uh, background in this area, and, and I'm quite glad that there's a company like yours that does this. So why don't you let our listeners know exactly what you do and, and, and tell us a, bit, a little bit about yourself as well. Yeah, for sure. So like you so eloquently said, I'm Selena. I'm actually based in Vancouver, more specifically Port Moody, for those of you that are in BC and familiar with the area. And for me, I'm just super passionate about sustainability. And I am just really passionate about sustainable fashion in particular, because me and Robert talked about this before. But, you know, people now they're at home, they're looking at their closets, they're becoming more and more aware of all the stuff they have. And, you know, when you really dig deeper into the clothes that you have, you maybe start to wonder why you bought it or where it's coming from or who made it. And so that's what really spurred my journey to start Recloseted because sustainability is so important in every single industry, not just fashion. And for Recloseted, we really do specialize in sustainable fashion because it is such an important topic. And so how we do that is we do that through our consulting services and also online programs. And we primarily help slow fashion founders. So yeah, that's a bit about me. And because I am based in BC, when I'm not working, I love to go hiking in the summer. I'm actually really excited for hiking season this year. And I also love to snowboard in the winter. So I really do try to take advantage of our local mountains as much as I can. Yes. And it's quite surprisingly how much the fast fashion affects landfills, affects uh, waste. And it's uh, like third of the garbage in landfills is is uh, something that a huge number like that it's is really lot. yeah uh, like, yeah it is so i'm glad that you're uh working on this are you from vancouver born and raised as well yeah i'm born and raised in vancouver so i've been very lucky and fortunate um you know I've, I've i love to travel and when we're able to do so i'd love to do again but just every time i go somewhere i find a newfound respect for where i'm from because vancouver is just so beautiful and there's just so much nature that sometimes we take for granted if you're from here okay did you need financing to start your company and how do you currently make money in your business now yeah, great question. So for me personally, I self funded my business. I was a bit stubborn, if you will, and I really just wanted to build this on my own from the ground up. And so I was working a corporate marketing job and I used the salary from that job to support myself, but also invest back into my business. And I am pretty lucky. We are a service-based business, so we don't have a lot of capital or overhead. Like we're not having to buy inventory, for example, like a lot of product-based businesses. So I was able to do that. Um, and how we currently make money is really just from our consulting services and from our online programs. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about your industry. I want you to give me a key piece of knowledge or information about your industry that our listeners can learn from. Yeah, so I talked about this a little bit already, but I really do believe sustainability is the future because, quite frankly, this is the only planet we have. Um, unless Elon Musk figures out how we can live on Mars, this is all we've got. And so we really do need to figure out how we can be more mindful of future generations and just be more mindful of our current consumption and our current habits. And so I really do think not only in fashion, but in all industries, sustainability is something that's quite important. And in our industry in particular for fashion, 
we're finding that a lot of brands are now really trying to change things and do better because there is a lot of consumer demand for that. And what I always say is that if you want to start to become more sustainable, if you're a brand or a business or a company, you just need to figure out what your priorities are and you need to figure out a plan because it can be very overwhelming to try to do everything sustainably from the get-go. And so maybe you start with your packaging or maybe you start with your materials or maybe you look at your shipping around the world and you try to reduce your carbon emissions. I think you really need to start somewhere and you really need to think about it because like I kind of talked about at the beginning, it is becoming something that is not just a trend, but it is a must have moving forward. And so um, I guess a tip or a piece of advice is just really starting, making your strategy and really making sure that you're just continually improving and involving your customers on your journey as well. Okay, good. What is the long-term vision and then what will your company look like in the future? Do you see the company expanding into other areas and where beyond Vancouver, BC or even Canada? Yeah, it's a great question. It's something I've been thinking about a lot this year. I'm trying to remind myself always to work on my business and not just in my business. And for me personally, although we are based in Vancouver, Canada, we serve clients worldwide. So we have clients all over Canada, all over the US and also in Europe right now. And so it's just more along just continuing to scale in those countries, but also expanding beyond that. And yeah, who knows, one day maybe we'll expand beyond fashion and maybe step into beauty or other categories as well. But for right now, we are focused in fashion. And for the next few years or so, I'm really just concentrated on scaling throughout the world. Good. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about doing business in Vancouver, BC. What are the biggest benefits for you and being an entrepreneur here in Vancouver, BC? I want you to give us some of the good points about starting a company here, but I also want you to give us some of the tough things or challenges for our listeners so they can keep an eye out for them. Yeah, that's a great question. I would say for me personally, it's been really helpful for me to keep work-life balance because like I talked about, we do have so much to offer here in Vancouver. So we are very lucky. Uh, you can just go outside, take a walk, and that can really help prevent burnout and really keep me grounded. So that's definitely a pro. And then in terms of my industry, I would say Vancouver is quite eco-conscious. There's a lot of people that care about sustainability. There's a lot of local hip shops, if you will, or businesses that are about that. And so that's been really helpful because we've been able to build a community. And some of our initial customers are from Vancouver. So that was helpful for us to branch out. So that's also definitely another pro. And then I would say the big con, which I think some of your other guests have also said, is just the fact that Vancouver is quite small uh, from an economy perspective. And so to really be able to grow and scale, it is important to think about how you can move outside of Vancouver, perhaps across Canada or even in other markets like we've done. So that's just a that's just a con. But I do think that, you know, if you start here and you really test things and you learn, you can quickly adapt those to other markets as well. So it could be almost a little incubator playing field for you. Okay, I want you to imagine you've never been to Vancouver. If you were to start all over again and you just moved here to Vancouver, BC, but this time you don't know anyone, knowing what you know now, what would you do and how would you go about starting all over again as an entrepreneur? Yeah, I think the most important thing when you're first starting out is having a really good community around you. So if I was just moving to Vancouver, I would join a lot of Facebook groups or I would go to a lot of meetups. Maybe there's virtual ones because obviously right now we're in the times of COVID and we want to be safe. But I would just try to network and meet as many people as possible because it's really important to have a supportive community around you when you're first starting out because it is tough and you want to have people that inspire you you want to have people that can be mentors to you and you can learn from. And then you also, of course, want to just have friends around you, especially if you're a solopreneur, so that it just doesn't feel lonely or too daunting on your journey. So yeah, if I, if I were to move, I would just really build my network and really build a solid community around myself. Okay. Let's talk about your routine. What does the first hour look like for you when you get in the morning? Do you have a specific routine or a ritual that helps you get motiv motivated to start your day? 
Yeah, it's an interesting question. I know there's some people that have a regimented routine and every single day it's the same thing. And for some reason, that's just never worked for me because I found that some days I feel more creative or some days I feel a little bit more drained. And so what I actually do is I have a list of things and then I kind of pick and choose what I want to do from that list on the day, depending how I feel. So some of the lists uh, or some of the items on the list rather are, could be like a walk around my neighborhood could be some light yoga stretching, could be a morning meditation, it could be journaling. Um, So I kind of pick and choose a la carte, if you will. And then I always start my day though with a really good breakfast because I think it's really important to nourish yourself. And then I plan out what I'm gonna do for the day. I really try to focus on tasks that I actually want to get done today. So I know there's some people that write down every single thing they could possibly do, but I really like to be realistic with what I'm going to get done and then have accomplishment at the end of the day because I've checked everything off. Um, So yeah, breakfast, to-do list, those are non-negotiables. And then I kind of pick and choose depending on how I'm feeling. Okay. Do you think entrepreneurs have to be weird or unique in a positive way or are wired? differently? Yeah, I definitely do think it takes a certain type of person or personality to be an entrepreneur. I really think that passion is really, really important because when you're building a business, you're going to be spending a lot of time on it and you're going to be faced with you know, challenges, it's inevitable. So you really do have to be passionate about it. And it takes a certain type of person to try to figure out what that is. And also, it takes curiosity and willingness to learn to be able to be an expert in your field and be successful. So yeah, I wouldn't say you have to be weird or quirky per se, but I would say you have to really be passionate and really be dedicated to seeing what you're doing through. Okay. Entrepreneurs are big readers. What books are you reading now and why are even audiobooks and or podcasts like this one? And can you recommend any books for our listeners who are also entrepreneurs? Yeah. So for me, I typically like to read a self-development book and then also a business book. So I usually have two books going on at once and I find that's a good balance for me. So my self-development book I'm reading right now, um, I actually have it here. It's uh, 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think. It's really good. I guess it's backwards, but it's a really good book and it's bite-sized pieces of information and it really just helps you give perspective on your life. And then the business book I'm reading right now, I also have it here. Um, It's the book on Netflix. So it's called No Rules, Rules, Netflix, and the Culture of Reinventing. Uh, So again, it's backwards, but that's been a really cool book too. Yeah, there's another book is, I believe this this won't work. Is that another? Yeah, I think that's another one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's been quite a few books on Netflix, but I have heard this one's not bad. And I'm really trying to figure out a company culture right now. So that's why I'm reading this one right now. Uh, But a couple of classic business books, I'm sure other people have talked about this. Good to Great is amazing. I think every entrepreneur should read that. The Hard Thing About Hard Things is also really good. Um, And then for any of your female entrepreneur listeners, I would really recommend a book called Burnout. Uh, It's by Amelia and Emily Nagowski, and they really talk about kind of how females react to stress and anxiety a bit differently than men and how we can really manage it. So that's been a big book for me that's really helped me this year, and I've been telling all my clients and friends about it too. Any online or offline tools that you use on a daily basis? Yeah, I'm a big tools and resource nerd, if you will. So for us at Recloseted, our whole team is remote and we also work with clients worldwide remotely. So processes and tools are things that I'm always trying to improve upon. But some of the things we use, which I think other people use as well, um, are Slack. So we use Slack a lot for internal communication and also to communicate with clients. We find that the tool is really helpful to organize things and find things. We also do all of our work on Google. So I don't know if you have any technology or like IT people and they're probably wincing a little bit because I don't know how secure that is, but we have everything on Google because it helps with our collaboration and with our sharing. And then another tool we like to use is called ClickUp. So that's kind of an alternative to Asana or Trello, if you will. So it's our project management tool and we really like the user interface of ClickUp. We really like how we can customize it. 
So those are some of the tools we use. And we do have more tools on our website. Uh, we get asked this question a lot. So, I mean, you can put this in the show notes if you want, but it's just recloseted.com slash tools. And we have a list of all of the different things that we use and what we use them for. Uh, things like QuickBooks and all those things are on there too. But I would say off the top of my head, like Slack, ClickUp and Google Drive, like those are things we're in every single day. Okay, awesome. If you weren't doing what you do now, what would you like to do for a profession? It's hard because I really enjoy what I'm doing right now. I think I would still be an entrepreneur, but maybe I might try a product-based business. So I could be doing maybe agendas or something like that. I'm, I'm really into organization, if you can tell already. So I think I would still be an entrepreneur, but maybe I would try my hand at some sort of uh, product-based business. What, what kind of a job would you not like to do? I could not do that job. Yeah, I, I think, you know, obviously every job has its pros and cons, but generally if I had to do a job where I had to do the exact same thing every single day, day in and day out, I think I would not enjoy it at all. Um, I think one of the things I really like about being an entrepreneur is that every single day is different and there's so much learning. And so I don't think I'm really into those routine type jobs. Like, I don't know what that looks like, maybe like a data analytics job or something where you're doing research and it's the same thing every single day. I really don't think I would like that, but I know some people do. So, you know, okay. it's not for everyone. In business, what is your favorite word, quote, or sentence that you like to use? Oh, it's a good one. I like maybe I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. One of the questions I ask myself, people on our team and our clients is just how can this be easier? And this is something that's been a mantra or motto for me all year, because I really do find that sometimes as business owners, we tend to make things really complicated and really convoluted and they really don't need to be. And that can cause things to break down the line or it can also cause unnecessary work and potentially burnout. So I've just been really asking myself and everyone around me, like, how can we make this easier and how can we just make our lives easier in general? What is your least favorite word or sentence you do not like to hear in business? Uh, that's a good one too. I would say I really don't like the word impossible. And I, I wonder if anyone else has said this on your podcast, but I really do believe that if you have the right resources and if you really think about a problem enough, you can think of a solution. It may not be like a perfect solution or the best solution, but I really just don't like it when people say that's impossible or like we can't do that. Because I, I really like to challenge that thinking and see if there's other things that we can do. Okay. If you had to pick one or two words to describe yourself, what would it be and why? I'd probably just say that I'm a passionate, lifelong learner. I'm someone that really takes pride in what I do, and it really needs to make an impact, and I really need to be interested in what I'm doing. So, yeah, I would just say passionate, lifelong learner. Self-development and growth, if you can't tell already, is really important to me. And I think that it's something that every entrepreneur should continually strive to do to just like continue to improve yourself. So self-improvement is big for you. It's one mm -hmm. of your things that you're always working on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything keeping you up at night these days on your business? Anything like that? Yeah, I mean, there's always stuff going on, right? There's always strategy things you think about in the middle of the night that you want to drop down, or there's maybe some team things going on, or maybe one of your clients is struggling. But lately, I've just been thinking a lot about what COVID is kind of impacting or doing to our environment, because I know a lot of people are doing a lot of single use PPE equipment, like there's a lot of disposable masks, there's a lot of disposable uh, face shields, like things like that. And I totally understand and respect the need to protect yourself, um, of course. But I guess the environmentalist in me is just a bit afraid about all the waste we've accumulated over the past year or so and just how we're going to deal with it. So that's one of the things that's been banging around in the back of my mind right now. Okay. I want you to give us the top three things on your inspired life list. This could be traveling more, learning more, philanthropy, writing a book on your entrepreneurial journey, anything like that you'd like to do on your inspired life list? Yeah, I, I talked about this a little bit already. I'm a big hiker, so there's a few big hikes I want to do. 
once we can travel again, I definitely think that this year, you know, while quarantine has been really helpful to build my business, and I'm sure other people have probably said the same thing, I definitely am itching to travel again. And um, so one of the hikes on my list is Kilimanjaro. And so I'm trying to train for it right now as much as I can, but I would love to do something like that and just continue to spend time with family and loved ones. I think that as you're building your business, it's very time consuming, but then you hear so many stories of entrepreneurs that make it and then they kind of look around them and they've missed out on a lot of life and they've missed out on a lot of their loved ones. And that's not something that I want to do. So it's just something I'm mindful of just continuing to spend time with family and friends because that's also really important. Good. Do you have any advice that you may have received that you can pass on to entrepreneurs out Canada? Yeah, one piece of advice that I got recently, which was really interesting, is I think a lot of entrepreneurs, especially when they're starting out or even when they're growing and scaling and getting to the next level, they suffer from imposter syndrome where they feel like they're not good enough or people are going to discover that they're fake or phony or whatever. And I think that a lot of people feel that. And one of my mentors recently said to me the fact that, you know, everyone gets imposter syndrome. It's actually imposters that don't feel that. And when I reflected on that, I really thought it was true because, you know, if you feel like you have, if you have imposter syndrome and you feel like you don't maybe deserve to have what you have, or you feel like you aren't worthy or things like that, of course you want to journal and reflect on that. But I also think that pushes you to learn more and pushes you to do better. And you can almost use it as a motivational tool. But yeah, I I know it's something that a lot of people struggle with. I think mindset is super important as an entrepreneur to master. And so that's something that's been really helpful for me lately. And I hope will be helpful for your listeners. Okay, good. Well, you like to travel, so you're going to like this next question. Entrepreneurs are connected all the time. Obviously, we've been kind of in our homes a lot lately, and uh, being online is a big part of our lives, When, especially when you got clients, international clients like you do. But we're going to take you away from all that. There's a small tropical island just off of Fiji that only has one phone booth there. There is no internet. This place does exist. We're going to drop you off there. You won't have our computer or smartphone or tablet. You can use the phone booth located there anytime to call the boat, and we'll come pick you up. How long would you last before you made that call? And what would you do while you were there? Ooh, can I ask some questions? Sure, yeah. Uh, do I have food and like, oh, yeah. a shelter? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, you got it. It's all there. There's just no internet. Okay, no internet. And then can I bring people with me or am yeah. I just alone? Oh, yeah. yeah, no, you can bring people. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, that sounds like a dream vacation. So I could probably be there for maybe a month or so. But, you know, obviously I would have to tell the team and prep everyone and make sure our clients knew we were away. But I really do like just being off the grid sometimes. I think it's so important to reset and recharge. It's one of the reasons why I do enjoy living where I live so much because we have a lot of nature around us. But yeah, like as a as an entrepreneur, it is really important just to recharge, put the phone away sometimes and just decompress so that you can get back and get back into the swing of things and make sure you are just, you know, you're just the best self that you can be. Fresher and stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Ready to go. Awesome. Okay. Well, how can our listeners get hold of you? And is there anything you'd like to add before you leave us today? Yeah, I, I would just say for anyone that maybe wants to incorporate sustainability into their business or just wants to become a more mindful consumer themselves, I would just remind you that it doesn't happen overnight. So you don't need to go from zero to 100% sustainable right away. This is a journey and more often than not, it's a lifelong journey. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. Don't feel super overwhelmed. Like I kind of talked about before, like pick and choose little bite-sized pieces that you can do so that you can make a more sustainable lifelong change because if you go vegan and then if you change out all your products to clean products or if you decide that you're going to change up your entire supply chain to be sustainable like that's really stressful and the chances of that succeeding might be slim because you might just bounce back and because you're too overwhelmed so bite-sized pieces really make sure that it is something that you are working towards that's something i tell everyone so i hope that's helpful for your listeners 
And if your listeners want to find us, we are at Recloseted everywhere. So we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, just Recloseted, R-E-C-L-O-S-E-T-E-D. And I also have a podcast as well for anyone that wants to really explore sustainable fashion. It's called Recloseted Radio. Awesome. Another podcaster. So glad to see that. Great. (laughs) Selena, thanks for coming on the show. I've learned a lot about you and I'm sure our listeners have as well. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much, Robert. This is really fun. Okay. Thanks for coming again. See you next time.